January supervisors meeting. I'll call the meeting to order at this time. And I'll invite you to join the board as we stand and pledge the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and with liberty and justice for all. Okay, at this time we have the roll call. Jerry Long. Here. Arthur Zerby. Here. David Leinbach. Here. Michael Reiner. Here. Elizabeth McGovern. Here. Carol Martin. Okay, you have an agenda. Before the board takes any action on any of the agenda items, we have a public comment session. We'll open the floor up. I put a limit to four minutes. I have a timer and I'll set it. And uh, whoever wants to go will all get a chance to speak before the board will respond. So at this time, is there anyone who would like to uh, speak? Okay. We'll move on. Next on our agenda is we have a guest tonight, Gilbert Martin. Um, so, I guess you guys had some time to look over my email request for just the reduction of the escrow. As uh, the last time I was in here, I think it was pointed out to me that um, the work can proceed before posting escrow up until we want to obtain a building permit. Um, so, some of the work <coughs> has started, and we've received a couple of inspections by Technicon. And, uh, at this time, we'd be ready to go into the building pad and finish out the storm sewer work that's, that has left to be completed on the site. Um, so to obtain a building permit, we need to post the escrow. And basically what I did was just look down over um, Technicon's um, outline here of, of the work that is still to be completed and uh, all the items that come before it, I'm, I'm approximately, um, there would maybe be 30,000 left to complete before we hit the items that would be the remaining 35,000. Can you items. quickly just tell us which ones you think you Sure. Oh, that I've taken care of? <coughs> um, Under uh, the ENS, do you have any of those? Yeah, so the 9,000, the 18 inch Filtrex socks that was installed. That is installed. It was a uh, replaced by an approved equivalent. Okay. But yeah. Um, the rip wrap aprons, rock filters there down at the bottom. All of the other what you see there is the liners your matting that goes on top of the grass seed. So that's a whole so those List items, items are yet to be done. Yeah, but those down, are. So down, all the seating, of course, isn't finished. Right, yeah. So down to the riprap, you say you took care of the rock filters and mm -hmm. the stabilization. Yeah, the stabilized construction entrance. So then below that, in the stormwater management facilities, uh, I believe we've taken care of the following items. Basin outlet structure, stormwater basin. The stormwater basement should be complete at the end of this. Uh, let me see here. Next week, because we now finally got that PPL got line moved. PPL line <laughs> yeah. Moved. Okay. Yeah. You, know you were held them off because yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. And weather. Blue Ridge, yep. The weather's been a challenge, no doubt. But uh, the concrete and seep colors are in. Um, the 12 inch up on the hill, that would still be some of the storm that we have yet to install. Um, over half of the 15 inch is in at this time. The 24 inch is complete. The 2x2 two two catch basins go al along with the 12 inch. Um, that has yet to be completed. Um, the clay cutoff trench obviously is in with the basin. The end wall of $7,500 there, that's completed from the 20, uh, that should say 24 inch pipe there, but yeah. And the inlets um, are completed as well, so. Um, yeah, what, what my proposal was basically the last few items on. That, that will be completed is the permanent stabilization and the amended soils in the basin. And what I'd like to do is just basically post um, that amount because that obviously has to be completed before I can file my uh, notice of termination. And uh, I, I need to see my yard, so <laughs> yeah. my family's just looking at getting the building 
fast starting, yeah. so I'd like to do that. <clears throat> Mike, do you have anything to add? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, it's an unusual request. I'll be honest with you. It's probably the first one I've had of, the, of this kind. Um, the interesting, there's some specifics to this one that are not your usual uh, norm in most of the projects that I see. One of which is we do have the owner of the property is an experienced excavator. Um, what we've seen at this point um, it is on a developer's type excavation scale. It's not a, a local, um, this isn't Joe homeowner going out in the yard and digging around. Uh, so I'll, I'll give Delbert credit where credit's due. Thank you. Um, the normal process, is, as you probably know, is usually you come up with a list of all the improvements uh, and then those improvements are either uh, secured financially or they're installed and approved as you go and then the developer will then secure what's left. Um, so the request is basically to only secure the seeding, the permanent seeding at the end and also the amended soils. So normally when I would make a, make a recommendation to the board it would be for what was completed to this point satisfactorily and then the, the remainder would be owed. Um, so that's that's one thing to consider. I mean, there is has been progress made, no doubt. Uh, the weather's held up. Um, some of the progress, the, there was a, a relocated utility line that had to be taken care of before it could move forward. Um, but progress has been made to the point where I would say you're probably 50%, yeah, over 50% yeah. of the base area. So um, there is a risk, obviously, incurred if the township does not decide to secure certain items and then they would not be completed satisfactorily. The other point, though, is this is an NPDES permit with the DEP. Um, so he is obligated to complete that or he would be found um, in violation of that permit as well. So there are mechanisms in place to ensure these items are going to be completed at some point, even if we don't have the financial security. So. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll kind of lay it out in that okay, fashion okay. for you uh, and leave it at that. Well, my next question is to our council. Is there, is there any concerns or you have any, do you have any concerns if the board was considering favoring this request? The, the only concern, you know, I have is this, that if he doesn't complete the, the required improvements and they're not financially secured, even though you have the MPDES permit, you know, that you could try to enforce Financially, the township will be out the money. You can't make a claim against any letter of, letter of credit or bond to then do those improvements yourself with that money. Right. Okay, so, I mean, definitely we could litigate against you for failure to complete those improvements, but if you have no money, you know, we're really not going to get anywhere. So mm -hmm. that's, that's my only concern, you know. But we would still we would still be holding the escrow. He would provide escrow of thirty five thousand. Right, yeah. but not not to cover all the improvements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there would be. But, but I, I that's my only concern. I agree I, with Liz. I don't. Right. I don't. I'm sure it'll work out. On, you know. But yeah. that's yeah. The legally that's what I have to. Right. You know. Sure. Exactly. Thirty five thousand would be outstanding. That would be. Right. That would be the difference. Yet yeah. so, um, it compared to what we have completed. And basically, the reason I went for 35 is, is that's a large sum of money for, mm -hmm. and that would actually be more the typical price that you would see and right. after paid for a single family dwelling. And um, I guess I'm looking for a little bit of grace there mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, in just the understanding that, yes, um, this is our personal mm -hmm. uh, home project. My family is really looking forward to, to getting the building going and moving in. And, uh, you know, once these. Um, once these other items are, are taken care of, I mean, yeah, I understand the concern. Right, and, I, and I've seen municipalities do it before for, you sure. know, a residential mm -hmm. a homeowner like this. I, I mean, I, yeah. it, it's not rare, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about a major subdivision, or honestly, yes. we would say yeah. to, you, right. We, you, right. we can't let you do it. But something like this I have seen done, so it's not unusual. Mm -hmm. right. And you agree the board does have the authority? I do, this? Okay. yeah. Do any of you have any questions for Dilbert, the engineer, or council? I mean, I've seen you've done a lot of work up there. <laughs> it's a lot of excavation for one house, that is for sure. <laughs> it looks like we're putting a Walmart in there, but I can assure you that's not the case. 
No discussion, no thought, no comments. Well, I'll make a motion that we grant a reduction in the escrow amount to 35,000 for this project for Dilbert Martin. Second. Okay, motion was made to, to, to grant the reduced escrow and it was second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you all for your time that you put together for this township as well. I know it yeah. takes a lot of time and effort coming out these evenings when it's you'd rather be at home. So I appreciate all you do for the township. Yeah. Well. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Okay, you have the minutes from December's meeting in front of you. Are there any corrections or additions to the minutes? Okay, we have a motion to approve the Dece or December meet, uh, yeah, minutes as they're listed, and it was second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, you have the bills. No light fund or state fund. Okay. I guess we always start out slow, don't we? Yes. <laughs> Is there any questions or comments on the, the bills? Is there a motion to approve the bills? I make a motion that we approve the bills in the amount of $37,434.93. Second. Okay, the motion was made to pay the bills. <coughs> the second, those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. <coughs> aye. Motion carries. Okay, we have your other reports. You have the Roadmaster's report. Anything you want to add? I do. Okay. Uh, the only thing I would have to add is that uh, I know you have a list of road projects there that I'd like to start the, the process of getting packages put together and going out for bid for this coming upcoming year. And uh, these projects, I'd like to we have to get them bid out separately uh, so that we can avoid some prevailing wage um, uh, criteria and stuff. Um, but uh, other than that, that's, I think it's about all I have to add to that. I saw I didn't put that in the report. Okay. All right. Yeah. Now, was it a year ago you got new garage doors on this end of the garages? Yeah. We better start looking at garage doors on the other end because there's a tremendous amount of heat loss, which costs money. Yeah. So... I don't know when, but sometime we should consider the other side's four doors. Yes. There's a few more. Yeah. One more door. Okay. And the one's a little taller than yeah. the rest. Yeah. Yep. But uh, it's something that we should be considering. Yeah. You can get get a quote. No. Uh, it just an FYI to you is that. The last rain event we had, the roof was leaking again. Now, we had gone up and sealed areas around the leak. Um, hasn't done it since, but we haven't had two major weather since since uh, we've done that. So Leaking at the bottom? It, it was leaking. Actually, it was leaking out along this side of the stone wall. There was four spots that was leaking in. We went up with uh, some pitch and pitched all the seams and it hasn't leaked since, but we have, haven't had a real heavy rain since we did it, so um, don't not sure if we got it yet or not. But, well, know, that's something that's been on the back burner for quite, quite a few years. But Is it Robert Roof? Mm. No. Well, it's uh, like rolled shingles. Salvage edge, yeah. And I remember when they put it on the last time, the materials was right at 10000 Well, it's going to take um, some deck replacement when they do that because the... Plywood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and the bottom ends were yep. rotted away. and The roof actually should have... It would have been nice if it would have been pitched harder to begin with. It's, it's too... 
it's pretty flat. Yeah, it's yeah. A little. No, I mean it has it has a slope, but the more slope you have, the faster it gets out of there. Yeah, probably to do it right would be to put a rubber roof on or a single membrane roof, and it wouldn't stop at ten. Well, I guess um, get some quotes on replacing the garage doors. Yeah, and um, it wouldn't hurt to <coughs> get a preliminary estimate on the on the roof. Yeah, okay. we can start looking at that. Yeah. yeah. Do you have anything else? No, but the garage doors. Yeah, that's are pretty yeah, well, important. Any is there any discussion on his um, roof projects? I guess the uh, the parking oh, lot. You're just uh, what putting tar and chip on the uh, parking lots in the in the park. No, uh, no paving. We want to do paving. Um, it was actually brought up uh, by the park board. Well, some of the park board members and um, up at the Eagles Nest, especially the one the one hillside. It's it's constantly washing the stone out. It, the, the parking lot goes uphill, and um, and it, it constantly washes out on the drive, and uh, and it's they're smaller parking lots, and they thought it would be nice to have them paved. Uh, plus, everybody parks up there uh, when there's snow in the ground and for sledding, and uh, it would make it a little easier as far as snow removal, and and make room for people to park up there instead of parking along the road. <laughs> uh, the uh, Pavilion over at Bowmansville, the concern is the pavement has settled and there's a inch and a half, two inch lip step up into the pavilion. And uh, Bowmansville days last year or two years ago, somebody had tripped and fallen and they didn't hurt themselves, but uh, that's been a project that's been brought up to me several times. <clears throat> by them to get done um, and then down the lower entrance uh, down here at Brubaker Lane um, you know we tried cleaning ditches and stuff down there that they just silk shut right away and uh, it's really starting to break up down there uh, been constantly sitting with water this year and uh, thought it'd be a good idea to get a maybe a two inch overlay the last 500 feet of the lower entrance to bring that road up to help the drainage issues. So all these projects is overlayment. Yes. Okay. These are all. Okay. These are all paving okay. projects. Okay. Now the maintaining the park driveways and parking lots is. Do any park funds cover that, or does that come all out? Of it could come out of. Yeah. The. The road cannot, the lane cannot, the parking lots could. Okay. Well, the lane could come out of, it could. Okay. But it's eligible to come out of liquid fuels. Mm -hmm. So it just really depends on okay. where we want okay. to take it from, really. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. the, lane, yeah. the lane is considered township road. We get mileage for that. Is there any other questions or concerns that Andy should not go ahead with this? The Bowmansville part, uh, what, you were just going to put an overlay on top of it? it or were you going to look at the base? Or well, something? we were going to look at, um, we were going to look at some base issues, but we thought because it would be such a thin overlay, you almost have to dig the existing blacktop out that's there. And so we were going to dig that out. Now, I may we may try to just dig that out ourselves to save some money um, and and shorten up on if you if you're standing there at the pavilion looking at the side with the yard it's eight ten foot wide on that side something like that would you say is that about right art eight foot eight foot that or black so top strip thought about shortening that up to maybe just four feet wide. There's really no need for it to be as wide as it is. Um, but yeah, we would dig out, if there would be any base issues, we would address that when we dig the asphalt out. 
And then the, the lower half of the, of the parking area there is really broken up, cracked up. We were going to dig that out, fix the base issues, and, and also repay that so we don't lose the parking lot there. Well, it seems, it seems like a good idea anyway to fix the bays. It's sinking for a reason. So if you just put more black tub in another couple of years, we'll be back. Right, right, yeah. Right and now. and it's it's not enough room there to do just an overlay. It it'd be too thin. I don't I don't know that it would ever stay. Uh, doesn't see heavy traffic. It's just you know most of that would be very light traffic, but uh, it definitely would be. There's, there's definitely some base issues there that need to be addressed. You probably just put on the dirt originally. I, probably, I would guess, yeah. You know. I think there's some patches that Art may have done years ago that might have stone under. They're on that parking lot. Yeah. Never, never did any work there. No? Nope, not, not me. Okay. Not there. But there's a spot maybe you might want to look at unless it's got better. At the ball field over there where they park, there's that little area from the cemetery down along the road. It used to wash out some and be sort of ugly, dip. Maybe a little light black top swell could be put down through there to, to preserve it. It hasn't washed out this we haven't had any issues with it washing out there a whole lot this year we had done some work down through there and seems to be holding tight pretty good there but that's definitely something i can look at and and, and see at times it would be sort of wet and too but it used to be things change yeah that is a that is a township road yeah yeah church street be church street North Church. Well, if there's no other concerns, I'll make a motion that we authorize the roadmaster to continue on with the project here as, as he described it and, and move on it. I second it. Okay. Motion was made and second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <coughs> okay. Engineer's report. Yes. Uh, you have a copy of my report. Um, as soon as I find it here. Dated January 3rd. Uh, I have five items for action tonight um, on page four. I'll read those aloud for you. Um, item one is the Glen Burke Holder Stormwater Management Final Financial Security Release in the amount of $405. Number two is the Randall Martin Builder Stormwater Management Project Financial Security Release Recommendation in the amount of $2,500. Number three is the Dale and Krista Good Stormwater Project Financial Security Recommendation Letter. Uh, to establish that security in the amount of $3,410. Item four is the Joseph Weaver Stormwater Project Financial Security Release Recommendation in the amount of $4,487.30. And lastly is the 514 Willow Street Tract uh, Lot Add-on Plan. That's the Kevin Horning Project uh, issued financial security release in the amount of $10,027.35. Okay, are there any questions or questions for the engineer concerning either of these five? Other, otherwise, is there a motion to approve the action as recommended by the, the engineer? I make a motion that we approve the items that have been just described from the engineer. I second it. Okay, the motion was made to approve the engineer's recommendation. It was second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, thank you. Okay, you have the SEO report. You have the zoning, the zoning report. He's playing with his tablet again. <laughs> well, I'm following after your pocket. Okay. You know, double check me while I'm playing games. Okay. Does the solicitor have anything to add? No, I don't. Okay. Thank you. 
Is there a motion to approve the reports? I make a motion we approve the Roadmaster Engineer SEO zoning as presented. And the solicitor, I second it. Okay. Well, the solicitor had none. I had none. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we had a motion to approve the reports and it was second. Those in favor say aye. <coughs> aye. Aye. Okay. aye. That's right, that's right. I reported that I had nothing. <laughs> okay, under new business we have a uh, resolution to dispose no no. Yeah, dispose of certain records. I guess we do this every year. We right? do. Yeah. yeah. That was just the this was the original. It would be resolution number two thousand nineteen dash five. Question or comment on that? Okay, I make a motion that we approve resolution 2019-5 to dispose of this records as they're listed. I second it. Okay, motion was made and second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Okay, we have one other item yet on our agenda. Um, the, the Planning Commission discussed at their last meeting uh, kennel regulations and I can find the, the minutes from their meeting. They recommended to the board to amend the kennel uses and allow some kennels to be per permitted as a right in the AG, AG2, and the RF zoning districts. What did I say? FR. Yeah. AG, AG2, and FR. FR zoning district. Um, there's been um, ongoing discussion with kennels and um, basically some farmers that would have small kennels, five, six dogs, would have to get a license and then they'd have to come in before the Zoning Hearing Board and it would become, you know, uh, I won't say it's almost a circus. Uh, we looked at other townships and other townships have um, small kennels that's permitted as a right and it, it uh, accommodates the farmers in the in the ag, ag two in the forest rec areas to be able to have um, kennels. Um, they have to meet the same conditions they would currently um, as under the zoning hearing board as a special as a yeah as a special exception. Um, So what we could do tonight, the, uh, the zoning author has presented a draft um, recommendations out of the planning commission's meeting. Our next step could be to have our solicitor, authorize our solicitor to prepare an ordinance following this draft and present it to the Lancaster County Planning Commission for their review. When you went through another municipality with this, did you have, you, then people didn't have knowledge of what you were doing? What? The people that yes. protest. I can, for, yeah, yes. I can actually, come? they had, um, what they did actually, or is they formed a task force specific yeah. to kennels. Yeah. And they comprised of a panel of, it was open to the public, it was, anyone could be part of the task force. Um, <coughs> we had we had the Amish, the Mennonites, farmers, and those, plain people. It was, it was a mix. Too. Um, yeah, it, it was actually so, a mix of so pro and con. Maybe showing up here. Um, well, it, the, the whole idea in that township was that there were many. Um, People who had access. Well, it, the whole idea in that township was that there were many um, people who had active kennels that had to then come in for conditional use because they were cited by the township for not having their approvals in place. 
Um, so as a result of that, all, all of those hearings were held and the supervisors at that time felt that they wanted to go another avenue besides having all of the applicants come in for conditional use. Well, we use. won't have those applicants. You would not in, in this case. This and, just, and when the task force was formed as, as a result of all those hearings, um, it was agreed that they wanted to come up with regulations that would allow someone to come in with a kennel that met specific criteria without having to go in front of the supervisors for a hearing. And that's what, that was what the discussion entailed, and as a result, something similar to this came up where as long as you comply with requirements one through seven, you could get a zoning permit from the zoning officer instead of having to go through the, the conditional use process the or people, zoning hearing board. People against this, were they pretty vocal? They were all vocal. <laughs> I think the... But it actually... Go ahead. I was just going to say, it's my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, because I wasn't involved in the, that task force. Chris Hartman was and, and Beth Allman of our office. Right. But a lot of the people protesting were more of the people, animal rights people, that yes. were that don't want kennels at all. Yes. I don't, or puppy mills, or you know. Right. And they weren't, a lot of those people also did not reside within the municipality, it's my understanding. That's correct. And yeah. actually, as the task force formulated itself, it went from a large group of people to include those folks you mentioned, down to a very small group. But, but it, it comprised people that had kennels and people that did not have kennels. And, and lived were, next to the kennel. Yeah, and right. lived next or nearby. So yeah, right. it actually became a really good working session um, to come up and come to a compromise between the two groups and still comply, you know, meet regulations where the people running the kennels were satisfied as well as the people living next door were satisfied. So that was the, the intent of what that, the but end result was. The only thing that. here is we may not have as many kennel people showing up where those people could way, way outnumber those who would be in favor of this. Yeah, my, my experience at the hearings is, I'll, I'll be honest with you, usually what would happen at the hearings, I would say, we probably had, I want to say, 18 hearings, let's just say, over the course of a year and a half. Um, and what would happen is... 18 on... 18 total. Municipalities. No, 18 in hit, one municipality. Hit 18 yes. hearings on one thing. Yes. Yes. Over, I would say, a two-year time period. So what would happen is a lot of times is you would have the kennel owner come in and they oh, would have, the, the owners would be notified in that case. And a lot of times it wasn't the neighbors or the farmers that were the issue. It was actually the animal rights people who were then notified of the hearing who appeared and literally it didn't provide much positive or uh, productive input, I should say. And they were, real, and they were a lot of them did not even reside and they in the did municipality. Not. And that's right. what they they were removed from the, the hearing, hearing process as a party yeah. because they had no standing in that yeah. case. Yeah, I misunderstood you at first. You're seeing 18 different kennel owners in hearings. In one municipality. I thought you right. meant just to get this adopted, you no. had 18 no, I'm sorry. Yeah. hearings meetings. <laughs> no, I would say they met probably a half a dozen times, though to come up with their ordinance that they have in that particular municipality. Yeah, well, let them come, I guess. What's your thoughts, Dave? Uh, <clears throat> the state regulates the kennels pretty hard. I don't see why we as a township would need to add to it. And it was actually a key part of why Honeybrook in that example went the direction they did with the permitted by right because the state does have that and those um, requirements are preempt like they preempt the zoning you know correct right so exactly and this can still be discussed if if, mm -hmm. uh, if we go forward here like I say and, and Liz prepares the uh, model ordinance or the draft ordinance we would get Lancaster County Planning Commission's comments He'd go back to our local planning commission. We'd get their comments before we would um, yep. then advertise it for a public meeting. I'm sure there will be some that would, if they have a problem with the kennel, they don't care what size it is and where it's at. Uh, what, we, what we did add here in, it, in item D they shall be at least a thousand feet from any residential zone district. 
and previously that was not in our ordinance. So that that's even though we're permitting it as a right for small and medium sized kennels, we actually put in some parameters. Um, that plus the fact that they pretty much need to be completely enclosed, all outdoor runs, kennels, the buildings, the whelping house being closed. And then within proximity, if there's a residential property or dwelling, they would have to additionally put screening that would help buffer the noise too. Um, what I've heard, I think we discussed that most dogs the, the problem that bothers people is the barking and what the, what the dog sees is what create, makes them bark. If it's a, a total enclosed barrier around them, they won't bark as much as the ones that have, are just like in a chain link run area. So um, we can move and forward on this and, and if there's still questions, concerns, when it goes back to the Planning Commission, our planning commission you certainly have a chance to go to their meeting and, and um, discuss it more or when it comes back to us. So if there's no other questions, I'll make a motion that we authorize our solicitor to prepare a draft ordinance yeah. per the recommendations that the zoning officer has prepared. And forward it to the uh, Washington County Planning Commission for their comments, for their review and comments. I second. Okay. Motion was made and second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Aye. Meetings adjourned at 7 38? 738. That's what I have, dude. 738? No, but. Okay, just checking. There's a glare on the TV. I mean, well, the TV on the clock. There's a glare. You know, and then it's hard to see if there was a hand in that glare yes. area. Because the two hands we, were together. We right. Need to get a digital one. I know. <laughs> Red light. Very good. Uh, 